All right. So, um, this is another uh, two sets actually. So one against a really high level Ed, um, who also did some coaching with me. Uh, he basically gave me some feedback on my play as we were playing, but also after. And uh, after this, we'll also have a look at a set with Vega that I had real trouble with. So, uh, spoiler, I'm going to be losing all of these games um, the whole way through. So, um, yeah, we're not going to be watching me win anything. Uh, basically, what we're looking at here is I'm trying to overcome uh, Ed's neutral. Now, Ed's neutral is... I don't know. So this guy does a lot of like staggered pressure as well, and you know staggered pressure is hard anyway because there's really only two solutions to it, right? Like one is back dashing, uh, uh, which I have tr I have trouble with dashing because well, the, I mean, there's a reason I'm in gold. Uh, the the other thing is that you can challenge, uh, but I don't have good timing, so yeah, that, that just doesn't work a lot of the time so what you're seeing here is the re I'm getting just battered in neutral and the reason I'm getting battered in neutral is because I can't seem to overcome basic things now this is I think this is the last of five uh, first of fives so obviously after a number of games you know you you end up whittling your options down so you're looking at sort of a lower order um, gameplay from me like I'm still trying to play neutral um, you know, because I've been anti-aired, um, he gets a good mix-up off his anti-air, um, and you're going to see me get hit because I'm struggling to backdash, for example, a lot. Um, so when he, like, he catches me low a lot, and it's not because I'm just standing up doing nothing, it's often because I'm trying to backdash, and I'm not quick enough on the tap-tap. I play on stick, so I have trouble with it. It's okay, just that's something I need to learn, right? That was gimmicky as fuck. It works sometimes, like especially when people like wait on neutral jumps, which they often do. They wait for like, you know, because they have to see whether you're going to stick out your far reaching medium, which I didn't. And then, you know, you do your command grab after. But yeah, I wasn't able to convert anything off that. Yeah. So, if we look at what I'm trying to do here. So I'm, I've had no success getting any kind of hits, right? And I've been getting tapped out a lot, like tapped. Um, so that was a good one, actually. So I actually managed to get air reset there off my um, back dash. It looks like, although it wasn't a counter hit, so maybe, maybe not, or maybe it was just a late hit, right? Um, okay, so this is a good situation. We're supposed to be converting off this, and you can see that. You know, you know I'm freaked out. So, you know, I'm still trying to frame trap him when he's already proven he's not going to get hit by that. Like, I've had four whole sets, four five, first to fives, um, and he's not been hit by anything counter hit. So, the adjustment really would have been the grabs, but then, you know, I try to do the grab, and it, uh, it whiffs because, you know, I jab, I try to do a jab into tick throw, and... Um, you know, it hits, or I was slightly too far off anyway, like I shouldn't have done that, but, you know, and that kind of information flows back in to make me go, oh, some grabs don't work because there's such a high risk option, and really what I should be doing is just go for more throws, just so he has to use the options that get him out of there. Neutral jumps, back dashes, you know, he has to do these things that carry massive risk. And even if it means I lose a whole set just from being punished for my grabs, then at least, you know, the option's there and I can work with something. I think what I had trouble with really was I, I found nothing that was really successful even somewhat consistently. I was blocking well, you know, my defense wasn't terrible, as in, you can see, like, I'm trying to do different things. I do get caught low a lot because of his walk speed. Uh, but yeah, my timing's just, uh, you know, my timings are slow and I'm just not being able to overcome this forward pressure, right? The forward staggers with his walk speed and the fact that he can kind of, he can cross a lot of distance in three frames, right? Because that's all he really needs. He needs to walk for like two or three frames. You can't react to that. And then, you know, he's got another button and then, you know. Yeah, he shows up as Plat, by the way, but that's not his main account. I think his main account, he said he was somewhere in Diamond, which is fair enough. I think he uh, he has multiple accounts. He plays different characters in that. He tries to pull them through ranked. This guy is a um, 
coach on New Challenger, which I didn't know. I just asked for some games, and he uh, he obliged. So there we go. So this this is it. One something that I've been labbing after this set. So I find that I can grab people if I successfully grab people, right? It's good because I get a decent amount of damage off it, right? It's like one something, one twenty, one thirty, and um, but I don't really get anything after because I'm, I can't seem to create any kind of variability afterwards. Uh, that was punishable, but I didn't do it. Um, so I really need to kind of work on variable pressure. You know, shimmies are good for that. I don't do any shimmies. Um, I need to work on that. But also, I need to work on what happens after this moment. I have a natural meaty, but if you block it, I'm minus two. There's no, po no positive anything to it. Um, there we go. That's, I don't know. Like, medium kick is my crutch right now. Medium kick for me is a crutch. It allows me to reach where I normally wouldn't because it moves you forward and then comes out. It's a medium, but oftentimes I'm using it at ranges where it's not confirmable. Like, that last counter hit there probably wasn't confirmable on the crouch medium part. So, yeah. So again, like, my defense is okay, but, like, stuff like this, right, like, he gets a hit and then he gets, like, what, 12 seconds worth of pressure off it or something. Again, with the medium kick. The medium kick gets caught a lot. Like, it's just, yeah. We talked about the frame data of that, uh, of his Psycho Knuckle, um, and his, um, thingy. That probably was confirmable, but I got freaked out, um, so I just backdashed that. That was stealing a turn, and then I didn't do anything with it. That's a, well, that was a good moment to grab, because it would have been like, oh crap, there's lots of stuff happening, and then he would have had to sort of you know, survive that. Good block. Dealing with the dashes, and tech and dead. Yeah. So, in this set, I was kind of in two minds. Sometimes I'll, I'll just not tech at all, and then sometimes... Like, against Ed, you kind of have to tech, because he grabs so often, it's, you know, we dis I discussed it with him as well, and he said it, it's a big part of his game plan, because he doesn't have an overhead, he doesn't have a number of other tools, you know, and he has these, he has defensive tools somewhat, he has a 3-frame, and he has a, a DP, right, which this guy doesn't use, he doesn't use the DP, seems to be doing it as a point of... Is it just us to make a point, basically? So he doesn't do the minus 2 into DP mix-ups, either. Yeah, I need to stop confirming jump ins into light kicks. That was. Uh, yeah. Took the throw there, which is good because, you know, you don't want to be tapping there. I think he's like plus six or something on the walk up. Oh, yeah, and there's the super. So, like, that's, that is all timing stuff. I have to learn, like, that. I don't know how you learn that. That's just from playing more, you know. And you can't block it out either against someone like Ed. I feel like, you know, Ed and Kami and stuff, the ones with the really good walk speed, those ones tend to... They get that, and learning how to defend against that is mostly around, uh, you know, don't get in it. Basically, don't be in that situation. Um, I feel like Akuma's walk around, for example, is a little less scary all the time, even in super, from Super Diamonds. Yep. See, that flicker stuff that he's doing, right, like, it not only is it annoying, but it's also something he can just kind of throw out against me, because he knows that my minus two, um, you know, you don't have to be afraid of my minus two. So, even if he didn't confirm it, which I'm pretty sure he's doing, he's confirming it most of the time, um, you know, that should have been a confirmed crouch heavy punch. Uh, yeah, I'm not confirmed. See, I'm putting myself in minus two a lot because um, basically I've not been able to find anything that works. So because I can't jump, I can't, or at least I've, I've written off jumping because of the anti-airing. I've, I'm not able to control any space against him. I'm kind of stuck in this space where I don't know, I've written off a lot of options and I keep having this, this space, right? The space where he's like, oh, I can just do heavy punch. And I'm not grabbing, see? I'm not grabbing. And that's really the solution here, is 
even if it doesn't work, right, even if we're going to have these fundamental issues that are just, like, problems of, all right, well, you're playing someone who's, like, super diamond or whatever, and you're not, right, even if we're going to have those problems, which are not solvable in this game, the problems that we can solve in this match, in this round, are things like, are we actually mixing the options that we're getting up? Now, he's already stopped backdashing after blocked flickers, right? Now, because the solution from my end to that is light punch shoulder, I believe. But even that won't always reach, and so it's he kind of gets it for free a lot of the time, to be honest. Because my crouch light kick, for example, won't air reset him, it won't reach. Um, I don't know. And I've tried a number of other options, like crouch medium kick, which reaches miles, but, you know. He'll just backdash too far by the time it comes out. So, yeah, the flicker thing is, um, uh, he uh, he downplays it quite a bit. He's like, oh, yeah, it's not that, it, you know, it's been buffed, but it's, you know, this and that, and it's hard to do in there. Um, I think we might have had a bit of a chat at the start here. Right. Looks like we're getting into a proper round. Um, so, he downplays it a little bit, but... You know, it is against Laura specifically. I reckon in general it might not be a great move, but in, uh, you know, against Laura it's pretty great because, you know, she can't really contest it on block. Um, she basically has to treat it, uh, you know, back to neutral, except that she can't hand. She can't, like, behave like it's back to neutral because if she does, that gets punished. So I've been, I'm getting better at dealing with his uh, V-Trigger activations, right, he's, he's doing them, it's a functional one, I call them functional V-Triggers when you get something that like, sort of makes you offensively, like, something that works even when activated raw, right, like Laura's one doesn't really work very well activated raw, because in order to make use of it, she really has to be right next to you, that was bad, that was supposed to be medium punch, uh, medium kick target combo into, you know, something, and I noticed that. Obviously, I did it, and then only the medium kick came out, so tried to confirm that with a jab, and didn't work. So there's definitely execution issues as well. But yeah, he's obviously dominating the ground game. He's dominating all that linear space, right, with his... So he's, he's able to kind of get into that mid-range, where his, um, you know, his pokes, like his crouch medium punch and everything, work amazingly well. And then he's able to back off into the range where his... Um, yeah, he's, he called that out because I think I've done that a few times now. Where I've, my my dashes, my command dash cancels are really bad because I hate using them, and I never really got into the habit of them. Um, which means that yeah, you know, I'm still learning that stuff basically. I'm basically in my tier, in my in gold and everything. I'm getting by on the fact that my neutral is ever so slightly better than than most people in that tier. Like that's that's it. Um, like I'm getting by on the fact that I have slightly more patience and you know I have a mix up here and there um, and, and my neutral slightly better so I do better at whiff punishing most people so, that was one command dash too many I should be normal dash in there I think two normal dashes works there that is actually um, thingy but. yeah so this he got caught there because he refuses to DP in those situations. But if he did, then, you know, he would probably get more rounds. But he doesn't need to because, as you can see, he's just battering me in the neutral. I've not been able to convince him that he needs to be scared of anything when he's close to me. So, you know. So I'm trying to do command ashes to sort of reset the space, right? And to make it so that he doesn't feel as confident. But, yeah, stuff like this, right, where he just puts out the, the spiderweb shit... Like, that just, it, it covers so much space. I'm not really sure what to do about that. I think I just need to play more matches again. I need to work on my offense, and then I need to kind of come back to this guy and see if I can play him more again from there. That was bad. I was just, uh, yeah, I was on, I think that was, I was getting hit, and I was, I command grabbed him out of his button because, yeah. Oh, balls. See, this is problematic. I don't know how you prevent that other than V-reversal. And that was Mimi. I think I even called it out that I was going to super on the while we were on voice, so he knew it was coming. Yeah. And there we go. Ed wins. So I think there's some lessons here, specifically around. Hold on, let me pause this. Um, I think there's some lessons. The big ones are um, 
if you, I need to learn to play against people that control space by default, um, especially people that are confident, right? Because if I play gold eds, gold eds don't do what he does. They don't control the space that way. That they, they have an understanding that their dash is good, and they have an understanding that their walk speed is good, but they're not using it to create sort of a, a threat model, if you will. They just sort of do stuff um, and they're looking for things like anti airs and DPs which I kind of abuse by being super neutral focused but when you have people that do well in neutral that use the fact that you you know their character is better neutral to, to win I kind of you know like you saw I can't really find solutions very well because I it starts becoming about all right well can you set up situations that are ambiguous when you do get in because I do get in you know, I get in like four or five times in a round sometimes, and it just it doesn't turn into anything, right? I can't. I get the odd hit, but then they dis they just backdash out of it or something like that. So my offense really needs to be improved here. It needs to be much more multifaceted. It moves, needs to be much more scary, much more dynamic, and I need to be able to um, I need to be able to fall back into things as an adjustment, basically, um, and not just be frame trap gem. I need to be able to be you know grabby and be confident that my grabs are going to work um, and not like write them off because I go well you know I've worked myself out of there so I think shimmies would be a good thing um, and yeah yeah I think beyond that there's just a lot of room for uh, for maybe I don't know I mean that one uh, grabs are really the solution if I had started using the light command grab for example like tick throws he would have had to start op using options that I can counter, and I can just start using normal grab as a as a as a sort of corollary. So do the command grabs, grab him a few times. He starts going, ah, oh, balls. Okay, I kind of don't want to take that much damage and make it scary. So how about we just don't do that, and we start neutral jumping. So then he starts neutral jumping, or he starts back dashing, or he starts delay tacking, and then I can start working with that. But yeah, well, in the set, I wasn't able to adjust to that very well. I was very freaked out by his movement. It, would, it took a lot of mental effort and mental buffer sort of to deal with the fact that I had to deal with his dash ups and then I had to deal with his pokes and his staggered pressure. And by the time I got to my own offense, I feel like I was already kind of like sort of maxed out on thinking about his options that I really didn't think of mine. So I autopiloted through my offense. And that fundamentally just meant that he, I, I got in, got nothing off it. And then when I wasn't in, he was winning. Like, that seemed to be the thing. All right, so um, on top of that, we I ran a, a Vega set with Crash. Crash is a guy that I played Honda with before. I also got a video of that up. Bad video, because I think there's two audio tracks on that one that run at the same time. I don't know what happened there, but uh, we'll try to not do that this time. Um, so this one, he has a really good Vega. Um, he's taken games off of like other really good Vegas in the mirror and that. Um, and we talked about the Honda set as well, and he, you know, obviously he was having an off day. Like, it's obvious from his play there that, you know, and the way we talked about it after that, he was just having a bad time. I have bad days, I have bad weeks. Um, I totally get it. So, this, we played a few first to fives. I think there's more than one, and this is the last one. So, again, we're looking at what happens when we, when I tell him, hey, I don't know how to deal with this, I don't know how to deal with that. So, the focus in this match was really, I told him, look, I don't know how to deal with the horizontal thing. It's called Sky High Claw, I believe. And Sky High Claw... Um, goes has two permutations now I've done labbing after this and we'll talk about that at the end of the video but basically I told him I don't know how to deal with the um, with the horizontal claw and it's obvious that I don't know his frame data very well as in um, I block on habit and when I challenge I'm challenging to find out if something is real, which is a really bad thing to do. Like, I should know and then react accordingly. Um, but yeah, I'm challenging in this set usually on, oh, it, maybe he's going to do a shimmy, because he did a few of those, but it looks like in this set he didn't do any. And um, yeah, he's going to do a lot of air stuff, because I told him I didn't know what to do about it, and I've obviously whiffed a lot of my normal solutions against it. Um, and he's going to be grabbing me a lot because I'm trying to be solid, uh, which means I'm doing a lot of blocking. And um, 
he's also going to be doing all of horizontal claw. So this is not very really representative of his normal playstyle, but this is the playstyle that we landed on after I basically showed him all my weaknesses. Right. Also, yeah, that V skill is, um, I mean, it's very punishable, but it is very annoying. It's a lot like Cody's in that way. Um, yeah. So he's not doing a lot of slides anymore. He started off doing more slides, and I punished him a few times, and I was kind of ready for them, so he stopped doing those. That was punishable. But you can see, I'm having serious trouble just dealing with the Sky High Claw. I, the problem I had in the set was I couldn't tell what side it was going to hit from, because when he goes to the... He can cross through you and then hit you on the back, basically, from where he started from. And he can uh, do a thing where he like crosses where he doesn't cross over where he hits his wall the wall he has and then bounces back onto you there we go the vulner the the invincibility on the uh on the v skill makes it um like really hard to deal with because i i can't seem to find a training mode scenario where i can like correctly do this like i can't seem to find a good way to uh, training mode this i can do the da the, the 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 bit where he dashes but i you can't input the back dash or the the v skill basically dodge and the thing that follows up um so i can't really training mode it very well i have to kind of play someone to train mode it. and you can see here i'm trying to find solutions for the sky high claw and it's not working Jumping doesn't work because the hitbox on the Sky High Claw is massive. Like, it's literally just a massive blob attached to his model. There we go. So I do bait the thingy very well. Um, the the V-Skill use. But again, like, you're seeing me doing overheads. If I'm doing overheads, it means I've basically absolutely lost my marbles. Oh, I missed that. And I think I win this on two lows. Yeah. That was, that was garbage. But, yeah, okay. Again, like, I was super freaked out because I was getting... I was having to deal with these moves that I... Obviously, my usual solutions weren't working at all. So, he was using this, right? And that's the usual solution. The problem is... The input window for that is quite... It's either quite early if he does the one in front. If he does it on the one in back, it's really late. Like, you have to walk into it and then do it. It's kind of like with Honda's butt slam. Like, the move comes... You have to check what corner it's coming from, and then you have to walk into where it came from in order to punish it. Uh, and then you have to basically input the move that you're punishing with from the wrong side, right? Because the... Oh yeah, no, I hit overhead. I was crouch blocking there. But, um, yeah, and you have to hit the hard punch, hard punch shoulder, so the HP bolt. Um, has to come in from the other side and if you do it wrong what happens is if you do it too early or too late you end up getting a fireball which obviously gets hit then by the move that he puts out or you get grabbed right either one um, so yeah it's it's kind of rough um, and there are so many permutations because you have the EX you have the normal Izuna drop or the Barcelona it's, it's a Barcelona that's the flying part of it so you have the Barcelona from the wall on his own side, the Barcelona on the wall on your side, near, far, neutral, so he can land on top of your head, he can land in front or behind, and then for the Sky High Claw, it's kind of the same. He can go from his wall, your wall, or, yeah, I'm not really getting a whole lot of opportunity to do anything, and the stuff that I am getting to do is, yeah, like, I have to get in so many times, I have to convince him so many times, and this is one of the things with Laura is, yeah, there you go, um, one of the things with Laura is, if you don't get time to convince someone of stuff, because she's a character that has to convince people of things, I have to convince you that, you know, I'm scary, because by default I'm not, you know, I'm out, like, I'm, if I'm in neutral, I'm losing, right, that's, Laura's losing by default when she starts the round, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to find solutions here, it's not working. I am punishing the V-Skill a lot, like he's doing that because, you know, he doesn't have to care. I think maybe I'm doing too many lice as well. Oh. And that didn't link. That was an interruption, which was okay, but I think that was 
it's not a viable solution. And again, like, see, it happens. There's a massive amount of time, but, you know, I can't tell what side he's coming from. That one also went through the fireball because it hits super high. Um, this is something that I found out in the lab after. Um, we'll have a look at that after as well. But yeah, I can't. I'm having real trouble in this set telling what side he's coming from. And as a result, I'm blocking the wrong way. So I end up blocking the way as if he was doing the other one. And then I change my blocking, but it's too late and I'm getting hit. So. Yeah. Vega's a hard matchup anyway. You know, if I can't get him to lose his claw. Jump back heavy punch is a reasonable solution, but it is super timing dependent. That is bad. Yeah. And I keep trying with different, um, what is it, different timings, and you've seen me do a few that were too late, some of them were too early. So I try the, um, it, I try with um, different timings, but I'm just not able to find any kind of, that's minus five. Yeah. And again, like, he did that. No idea where it hit from. And dash up plus two. Nope. I don't know why after the the drop he wasn't just dashing up because that's I think that's plus two on dash up. It might not be. Yeah. So he's broken me down pretty well here. Um, and obviously we were talking at the same time. And I'm not really finding any solution to anything he's doing. And I think he might get a perfect here. And this whole time I'm thinking about what or how am I going to activate? And yeah, d didn't even find any thingy. You know, because I had to deal with all the air stuff, I also stopped being able to respond to the um, what's it called to the dashes. Um, usually I do a little better on that, but yeah, there was just no space for that. And again, like HP Bolt, man, like it's it's a great anti-air, it really is, you know, and on dash up afterwards I get a zero, so that's good. But um yeah, it's there, and I block one and I have no option for, no solution for it because well, you know, that's the first one I've blocked I think in the whole set. Or in the last like two sets. So yeah. Um, there's the twist, yeah, into that. And then he's super plus, and he does his plus two thingy. And then there's the throw. Yeah. And I think the solution for that one is to command dash out. I think when someone, when a Vega does that stuff, I think they can't pilot it as much if you're in the corner because the tracking kind of stops at a certain point. So I think, um, you know, these games might also be backwards, I don't remember. So. But yeah, overall, again, like the problem here is the, the problem here is defense. So this is the opposite of the other one, really. Um, yeah, my offense isn't great in this one, but my defense is really what's what's getting me done here. And look at that! See, I try to stand hard punch, and it works. Yeah, I'm doing overheads now because I'm not opening him up at all because I've had no space to convince him of anything. And there we go. I think that's I think that's a five and zero. Should be right. Oh, there's one more set, I think. Yeah, we get one more set. One more game. Um, but yeah, I went 0-5 against him. I went 0-5 against the other one as well. And so you can see that there's holes in my defense and my offense in different ways. So for the Vega, I have no idea what his moves do. I don't know his frame data. And I'm testing him when really I'm having trouble even finding solutions to the most abusable but also punishable stuff that he's doing. And that situation happens again. And he does that again, and I think he does another one, right? Yeah, there we go. Um, I think that happened twice as well, like, because I'm so freaked out. Like, I just, I'm trying to look out for, right, if he's going to do air stuff, where is it going to come from? So, yeah, it's, uh... So, just to talk about what I labbed. So, I ended up labbing the, um his air stuff and that's when I really realized how many permutations there were so it's not surprising that I'm freaked out right I'm not it's not surprising that I'm like having trouble recognizing again with the overheads not good not a good idea that I think is punishable I think I can work on that as well but I think 
that's going to take a little while. Again, punishable, definitely whiff punishable, because that's a whiff effectively, and I think I was out of block stun before he even hit the ground, but yeah. And I missed my dash there, I remember that. So I missed my dash, and so I was like, oh crap. Like, I, I was in, I put in the dash, it was too early, it didn't come out. And I was like, oh, well, what do I do now? Ah, stuck. Okay. Alright, so what I ended up labbing was. Um, what was it? So I ended up labbing his air stuff, right? So I ended up labbing his Barcelona. Now the Barcelona has uh, EX to both sides. He has two sides, EX, and then, you know, in front, behind, and in the middle. And there's no real one-size-fits-all one punish, but there is a one-size-fits-all solution, which is command dash out. If I command dash forward on any of them, the tracking... Usually, if I do it slightly late, the tracking will simply not, like, follow me. So, because I think the tracking works is, is after the wall bounce, the tracking has, like, your position set, and then after that, you can just, if you move quick enough, like, it can't hit you. So that seems to be a solution. Like, you just dash out, and then, I mean, it, you know, the, he just lands wherever you were, and, and off you go, basically. And this works in the corner as well. If he does it in the corner, if I command dash early enough, uh, you know, I'll just be gone. And then he'll just land, and it'll be reset to neutral. Now, that won't always be a nice solution, but at least you're back to a situation where you can work with it instead of being under pressure. Um... And then, you know, for the ones that go in front, so if, if you're here and he goes, you know, back and into the front, or this one and into the into what he would consider the front then, right, as long as he's not crossing over from his wall bounce, that one, HP Bolt works on every time. So being able to recognize that and being able to determine, right, this one's going to go in front so I can HP Bolt this, or this one's going to cross over, I need to command dash, that seems to be the decision space. So I think that's much more manageable than, you know, trying to find a HP Bolt for every one of them. When I get more familiar with the matchup, maybe I'll be able to HP Bolt on time for all of them, and I'll be able to, to do the walk-in and everything. But like with Honda's butt slam, it's just super hard to actually do it, so I'm gonna just not do it for now, uh, because it'll just get me killed more than often than not, and I already have two solu a solution effectively with a small decision space that should allow me to to just get on with things. So I'm gonna do that with the Vega matchup. Um, as for the sky high claw, so the horizontal, yeah, I just need to play more games, but I have punishes for it. Um, I think I recorded some, let me see if that uh, hold on a sec. Let me just let me just see if I have those videos here. I think they might be. I do them with Relive or a Radeon Relive. Yeah. Okay. So there's this one. Uh, let me see. All right. So I just set up the lab, and uh, with it set up. I just did this. Now, what I found was, so I'm trying to input my thingy, right? I'm trying to input light punch shoulder, and as you can see there, dink, there we go. And see, so I'm getting reversal timing, but this is also reversal timing at the earliest possible frame, and that will hit him, so it'll punish him, and it'll, I'll get my plus two. Now if we keep watching, so I, I made this a little longer because I found that some of the timings were iffy if I made it short. So that punishes as well. That's nice. Reset. Ding. See that? Reversal timing, light punch shoulder, and somehow it whiffs. This is super inconsistent because I think it's frame perfect. I think you have to do it frame perfect. So you have to do it, you have to put in the reversal timing at the earliest possible frame, and then it'll hit. Because I think what happens is, on his recovery, his hurt box retracts is like wider at the start and then one frame later it retracts slightly and so the it goes from hitting to whiffing um so basically yeah this is not a punish um that, that's not going to be uh, anything that we can do anything with this is only for the ex one though for the normal one um i believe we can let me see um is it this one there we go. So this one 
if we look at the normal one, the normal one isn't as bad at all. Like it's much more manageable, you can see. So this is just a forward heavy punch, heavy punch. Now, there is a bit of timing involved. He has to land first and then you have to do it. So you, and yeah, and on whiff, you can see crouch heavy punch into medium punch shoulder works every time as well. So the normal one really shouldn't be spammable. The EX one, that one's harder to actually, um, uh, harder to actually um, deal with. But overall, I think, yeah, it's just a matter of me playing it more, being ready for it, and creating a space where, you know, he thinks he can't do it. Because at the end of the day, I only have to convince him that I'm, I'm reacting to it. And that usually only takes two or three times. Um, you know, it's just because I told him, obviously, that I didn't know what to do, that he just started abusing it. Which is fine, because that's why I'm playing him, right? So... Alright, um, I think we'll leave it there. Uh, quite a bit to think about, quite a bit to work into my game plan. I think ultimately I just need to work on my offense a lot. If I work on my offense and just work on making it more variable, because variability is scary, right? If you go, right, this guy just did a light kick and, you know, his options are grab and then afterwards he doesn't know what to do, or he just frame traps and I just block it out, that's not very scary. So I need to start creating that four or five way situation where they go he does a light kick and now he has all this stuff that he sometimes does off here now how do I you know respond that kind of thing so I think I think that's a lot of lab work to like find timings and everything and also playing long sets with people to really put it into practice and to to lose a lot like you know I'm gonna go ahead and and, and lose a bunch of games just trying stuff out and if I can find the timings and learn the muscle memory to kind of have staggered pressure for example that's really scary so I can continue um, strings that normally wouldn't hit or if I can uh, start setting up for people to press buttons like that you know those kinds of things that that's that will open me up a lot uh, to, to, to do stuff so yeah and then hopefully that uh, you know the Ed player and Crash um, both were more than willing to play more games uh, I'm also in some discords that I really should be pinging for games now, so I'm gonna start doing that and then uh, yeah, hopefully next week I'll have another another set for you. I, I think I should probably play, uh, there was a guy I played in the Bropanga season, Bropanga is the um, like a, a seasonal, I think it's a quarterly or something, I don't know. They run it and it's, uh, it's for the EU, there's just a bunch of EU players that get together and they play. I uh, I did really badly this year and that kind of spurred me on to do uh, to be a bit more serious about this as well. Um, and I did badly because I got tilted and I basically gave up, right? I, went, I got really annoyed and it really high pressure and I found out that mostly it's because I'm, I just, I've not been putting in the work, you know, I've been kind of coasting on having better neutral than golds and um, so I should really just work on that. So yeah, I'm gonna do long sets. Next week I'll probably try to have a guile set or something for you and then uh, yeah, we'll just, I'll just see if I can incorporate some of the stuff that I found this week. Alright, peace.